Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm uh, very happy that we're hosting tonight's event at Joann's. They've been great hosts, and hopefully everyone's enjoying having a little more elbow room. So that's been great. Um, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Tesla Companies and their development team in a minute. As a brief reminder of kind of where we're at, we did a first open house in late February to let Tesla Companies hear from the community as they're first looking at the city's 19 or the city's 2016 comprehensive plan and starting to look at what the framework of the project might be. They've now taken that first round of public input. They have a uh, initial framework plan to present so that we can digest, digest additional feedback and then work towards a formal concept plan. I'll, I'll turn it over to test the companies and then I'll be available at the end for any questions. Thank you. Can you hear me now? All right, all right. So again, I'm Justin Goodwin, planner with MKSK, uh, here with Joel Testa and Brett Moses. Uh, we're here, as Greg mentioned, to uh, advance our planning thinking with the community as we move toward developing a concept plan for the downtown phase two site. So if you've gotten a chance to maybe peruse some of the, the graphics that we have over on the tables over here, you're getting a sense of the, uh, the stage of the process that we're at. Uh, we have a brief presentation the, that we'll go through and share with you our current thinking about opportunities on the site and the, the form and scale and use of development that we uh, see occurring at the, the location. Uh, and then what we'd like to do is gather around uh, these plans and some imagery that conveys the, the type of development that we foresee here and have conversations with all of you. Uh, who of you attended the first open house a month or so ago, a month and a half ago? Great, great. Well, thanks for coming out again tonight. Um, we really appreciated uh, having conversation with all of you at the first open house. Uh, and that has helped to shape our thinking as we've moved through um, advancing toward a concept plan. So again, I think you all know uh, where we're talking about here, the phase two area. Um, a little washed out, hopefully our other graphics uh, are visible uh, and, and legible on the, the screen. Um, but uh, moving down Clinton Street, um, and, and into the project site uh, north of Village Way and along Owen Brown and moving up toward the, the Villas Condo development. And what we'd like to do tonight is uh, just quickly go over the process and the stage of the process that we're in, uh, talk a little bit about uh, some opportunities that we see with the development site and share with you uh, what we call a, a plan framework. So uh, we are at, at the end of our second stage of developing this framework. So we, we started uh, back in February, engaging the community, had our first public open house that many of you attended. Uh, and, and after this open house, we'll be moving into developing an actual concept plan. Uh, I will note if you can read uh, the date down here, April 24th was an original target date for the Planning Commission. We do expect that that date's going to move out a little bit. Uh, schedule shifting a little bit, but we're moving directly into developing a concept after we get more input from the community this evening. Uh, I do want to encourage all of you, if you haven't yet, uh, visit our project site uh, at HudsonPhase2.com, uh, right there at the top of the screen. How many of you have taken our online survey yet? A few of you, okay, great, thanks. Um, so, so this is now available. Uh, a little difficult to see on the screen, but if you visit this site, uh, there are a series of questions geared towards residents and business owners, um, and, and that's open for anybody to, to provide feedback, so please do so. Uh, what I have on the screen here is a summary of the types of things that all of you who came to the last open house shared with us. Uh, we didn't have anything, any concepts at all uh, drawn uh, on the site, uh, just uh, some maps of the area, and we wanted to understand uh, what it is that's on people's minds here in Hudson. What would you like to achieve and see happen with this phase two area in downtown? And you'll see the top three things that we heard, and, and what we did is we uh, we summarized all of the things that, that all of you wrote down on post-it notes and, and sketched on maps. Uh, and uh, what we heard is a desire for housing diversity and specifically for an empty nester oriented housing product. Um, 
uh, concern and interest in improvements to the street system, uh, to the quality of the streets in the area, and concern about what the potential traffic impacts might be of new development in the area. Uh, and then a desire for integrating parks, recreation, open space opportunities as part of this development area. Uh, and, and we think all of those are, are really important uh, considerations. Uh, some other, other things that we heard about, obviously preserving the historic character of downtown Hudson, um, and uh, some interest in what the parking impact of the, the new development will be and how that relates to First and Main and the rest of downtown. Um, and then some really specific issues like what happens to the railroad bridge at Owen Brown, for example. We know there are some constraints that need to be dealt with from an infrastructure perspective. Uh, similarly, stormwater uh, in the Brandywine and the, the culvert crossing at, at Owen Brown. There are some issues that need to be resolved, and we think this development's an opportunity to help to resolve some of those things. Uh, so, a little, in a little more detail on those top three things that we heard about, uh, housing diversity, a lot of desire for, as I mentioned, empty nester oriented uh, products. Uh, definitely there's a market for first floor living or at least one floor living. Uh, if, it, if we're talking about multi-story, then at least having it be elevator accessed, um, enclosed attached garage. You know, a highly amenitized type of, of housing product, but, but one that you don't really have here in Hudson. We, we've seen a clear desire for that. Um, streets and traffic, I've already alluded to some of these things, um, making sure that, that we're introducing traffic calming measures, both as part of the, the new development and uh, as it relates to the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, we think that's really important as well. Uh, and in parks and green space, interesting, uh, one of the things that we heard that we hadn't originally been thinking about was desire for a playground somewhere in and around this area. Um, a lot of people who are thinking about downsizing would like to live close to downtown, uh, having a place to take grandkids uh, on the weekend. So that, that wasn't something that we originally envisioned, but, but we see a lot of value to those types of spaces uh, with this development. So what I'd like to do now is share with you what we call a plan framework. So it's uh, moving incrementally towards a, a detailed concept plan. Uh, so you're not gonna see buildings drawn on the site yet. Uh, we're gonna talk about the overall organization uh, of the site in terms of land use, um, scale of development, roadway network, uh, and how that starts to organize where buildings ultimately would go. That's the next step of the process. So again, I, I think you're all familiar with the, the site here, uh, the school bus uh, facility in, in the north end, the salt storage in the, in the center, and the windstream facility in the south. Uh, and we're gonna switch to a diagrammatic view. One of the things that, that we're really interested in is what are the views uh, into this site as you're approaching it from downtown Hudson, from First and Main, from uh, Clinton Street? And uh, that's important because that visual connection is one of the first things that, that is going to draw people back and forth between the existing downtown area and, and the phase two area. We want this all to feel like one place and to fit together. So. We see an opportunity at the end of Clinton Street for a signature piece of architecture, a, a signature facade, something that as you're entering Clinton from, from Maine, uh, you see at the end of the street uh, a, a nice iconic building that fits into the, the character and scale of downtown Hudson, uh, but has some interesting architectural elements that announces a presence uh, for, for this new expansion of downtown. And, you're gonna see a number of photos of existing development and architecture from other places. Uh, I wanna emphasize, we're not saying that it's any one of these exact buildings or this exact style that we're, we're saying is going to get built here, but they're representing various aspects of architecture and development that we're considering for the area. And you'll get a chance to take a closer look at all of these images uh, when we're, we're finished here. Uh, but really what you're seeing here is more office-oriented development, and that's what we uh, envision uh, in, in the south portion of the site. And part of that 
is uh, maximizing the uh, available area for development in the south portion of the site. And one thing that we've looked at and discussed with the city is potentially realigning Village Way a little bit closer to the railroad embankment. Uh, essentially, this would be through the, the parking lot that's called the valet lot that doesn't get a lot of use today, uh, behind, kind of behind the library area. Um, and that would actually expand uh, the open space that the, the library uh, currently owns and might develop on at some point in the future. Um, and, and it also expands the development area in the south portion of the site for office-oriented development. Uh, so we think that's a, a really a good opportunity uh, both for development and for site circulation. You'll see this, uh, this street network extending up through the site and then intersecting with Owen Brown. Uh, so with office in, in the south portion of the site, potentially some uh, structured parking uh, oriented with that office in the south portion of the site, and then uh, starting to create a street grid that intersects with Owen Brown. Uh, so here, again, office-oriented development. Um, we're thinking uh, in the realm of three to four stories in this portion of the site. Um, and you can see a few different uh, examples of uh, how office development can be done um, within a, a fairly uh, modest height range, uh, even to get four floors, but, but doing that in a way that the, the visual presence of the building isn't really dominating um, to the, the view from the street. And then moving northward into the site at, at Owen Brown, we see that as a transition, um, a transition in use, a transition in height. Uh, so moving into uh, generally three-story development, uh, so shown in the orange uh, on the, the plan here. This is an opportunity for what we're calling mixed-use flex development. So it could be a combination of, of office or residential, uh, perhaps um, some buildings purely office, some buildings purely residential, or stacked office on the bottom and residential on the top. Uh, and, and you'll see here this, this central green space that, that we are uh, envisioning uh, essentially taking Owen Brown and splitting it apart and creating a, a central green. Uh, it does a couple of things. It creates a, an active uh, space that organizes the development around it. Architecture would frame the street on either side of this green space. Uh, it also is a, a built-in traffic calming measure on Owen Brown. Uh, we, we're really... Uh, interested in making sure that we don't create more of a traffic issue for the residents of, of Owen Brown. And there are a variety of things that, that we think can be done to, to mitigate that. Uh, one of them is an open space like this that, that funnels traffic um, around and slows it down. Um, but also we're creating this more direct connection into Village Way as well um, to get people directly into downtown. And also starting to create a street grid in the north portion of the site with other connections into Morse Road as well. And you'll see here a few different examples of um, scale and general character of, of development architecture in the two to three story range, um, primarily residential in, in the first two uh, images and a mixture of residential and office in, in the bottom oriented around an open space. And to the point about traffic calming, uh, we're also thinking specifically about what happens at the intersection of Owen Brown and Morse Road itself, uh, and what could happen at Owen Brown. And I understand uh, Owen Brown residents recently met with uh, the city engineer and shared some specific concerns um, for your neighborhood, and, and um, we really appreciate those perspectives. Um, you know, one idea that we think would be great is um, turning Owen Brown back into a, a brick street, the bricks underneath uh, the asphalt today. Um, bricks a good way to calm traffic moving through a street, especially a, a residential street. And it's part of the historic character of the area as well. Um, also doing some things at the intersection itself, um, maybe some design features that, that visually and physically narrow uh, the width of the street. 
um, opportunity to create some planter area. Uh, could actually be used for stormwater uh, as well, uh, integrated into the streetscape and uh, visually discourage traffic from moving down that street because it seems more like uh, a residential street that through traffic shouldn't be going down. Uh, and just a few other examples um, of mixed use office and residential uh, development. The, these again are just sort of um, benchmarks for us to look to as we do uh, start to develop architectural concepts and, and get a really good understanding of what the footprint, the physical footprint of buildings might be uh, in this south and central portion of the site uh, and how they can be designed to accommodate uh, both office and or residential uses. And a few different uh, inspirational images of uh, open spaces um, that, that could be design points for uh, the central open space that we're showing along Owen Brown, uh, community gathering space, a mixture of green and hardscape area, a uh, space that could be programmed uh, not just for the, the new residents or employees of the phase two area, but for all of downtown Hudson. And I mentioned structured parking earlier. Um, this is uh, one of the things that we continue to discuss with the city. Uh, we understand that there are some parking issues in downtown, um, and we want to make sure that as we're introducing new uses with their own parking demand that we're not exacerbating the, those things, and, and ideally that we're actually helping uh, the parking situation in downtown. So there may be an opportunity for some shared parking um, integrated into this site. Um, what we're really uh, cognizant of is doing that in a way that doesn't let the, the structured parking sort of dominate the, the view of the area. So screening that with buildings, um, it may be a, a parking terrace with, with buildings uh, between it and the street, so it's sort of hidden back uh, closer to the railroad tracks. Uh, it may be some of these examples show structured parking that actually has active uses lining uh, one side of it on the street side. So those could be residential units, it could be office space. Uh, and one of these images actually shows the, this bottom left one, it's a pretty large structure. It looks like a, an active building, an office building is actually a parking structure that's designed to look like a building. Uh, that's, that's a pretty intense example, but just to, to demonstrate that there are a lot of things that can be done um, to make structured parking really visually fit into uh, development because we want to be really sensitive of that architectural presence. And then moving northward uh, into the, the site, into the, the salt storage area and the, the school bus facility site and, and uh, closer to the north edge of the site, in this lighter yellow shown here, uh, and I do want to point out that the numbers that you see here are indicating both the, the acreage of these new little blocks of development. Uh, that are created by the street system, as well as the general range and the number of floors that, that we see development taking on in terms of height. Uh, and, and we see the north end of the site primarily as residential development in two to three floor range, um, taking on a, a mixture of townhome or dense single family, urban, traditional urban single family type of development and a few different examples of that scale of uh, residential product as well. Uh, what's really critical, not just for residential, but for the entire development, is an attention to detail in architecture. That's, that's part of the, the charm and character that you have here in Hudson already, and we want to not to replicate what you have here, but to complement it very well, and a lot of that has to do with a close attention to the detailing of roof lines and facades and windows and doors uh, and what happens between the building and the street and the sidewalk, what's, what's the landscape character of all of these new streets as well. A few additional examples. Uh, and What's really important, we think, is that, that relationship between the front doors of buildings and the street. This, you know, we see this as a walkable neighborhood. That, that's the, the desire of this site is its proximity, its walkable proximity to downtown. So every aspect of it needs to be designed with the pedestrian in mind. 
Uh, and part of it is also integrating, as I mentioned earlier, and it, there's an interest in open spaces here. You'll see in this bottom right image, um, it may be a little difficult to see in this particular image, but there's a courtyard designed to this residential building, a little central open space, and we see a great opportunity for those types of spaces to be integrated throughout this development. Small, uh, charming little pocket parks uh, and courtyards. Uh, some of them may be tucked away and, and really primarily used by residents. Um, they, they may be used by employees of the area, but they could be open to anybody to use who might be taking a stroll from a nearby neighborhood through uh, an adjacent neighborhood here. Uh, little areas of respite and, and relief along the street within the architectural pattern uh, that gets developed along these new blocks. And also, I mentioned earlier the interest in uh, active space for, for children in the area. We think that's a, a great amenity to be explored uh, in, in this area. Uh, and it's something we're really interested in partnering with the city to, to identify the, the best location for it and, and design of it. A few different examples here, and, and we have some others in mind that, that we're continuing to explore as inspiration. Um, but, but the thought here is it's not just a traditional you know, playground swing set. It's something that's interesting, that's designed to fit into the, the surrounding environment and the landscape. It's interactive. Uh, maybe not even just oriented toward children, but just a, an interesting landscape uh, and, and space for anybody to use. So with that, th that's the, the sum uh, of the, the plan framework that we've developed to this point. So again, uh, we're thinking about the overall organization of the site, creating a street grid within the site, uh, doing that uh, in a way that uh, we think will help to resolve some of the concerns with traffic that might be generated within this site, uh, thinking through how we integrate parking, where it's best located, uh, that range of uses and heights through the, the site. And as we move forward, that's where we'll be really uh, uh, sharpening our pencils and, and thinking about what the, the number and size and scale of buildings is. Uh, and, and how those would phase across the site. And that's what will develop into the actual concept plan that we'll be partnering with the city to develop. And that's, that's what we have prepared uh, for formal presentation this evening. Um, happy to take a couple of questions. As I said earlier, we do want to make sure we get to spend some time uh, around the table here. And I, I believe, Greg, you had uh, a couple of follow-up points as well. Yes, just, yeah. and I'll just give a couple brief references on kind of some upcoming items, some key points for the development team and some key points for the city. Um, at, at this point, obviously, we've, we've got a terrific framework plan, but we haven't, the development team hasn't taken it to the point where we can see the, the total uh, scale of the project. Uh, with the next generation of the project, as we get to a concept plan, we'll have a sense of number of square feet, number of dwelling units, square footage of office, once we get to that level, then the city can work with the development team to start a parking study for the larger downtown, a traffic study for the larger downtown, and look at more regional issues, including stormwater. So a few pieces on that. For example, for the traffic, the city uh, recently completed a detailed existing conditions analysis that looked at 20 intersections across the downtown. So we can use that as a baseline. And then once we have a sense on the scale of the project, we can model in the proposed impacts of the development. And then we can look to address this project as well as maybe enhance or address any existing conditions issues kind of as one coordinated effort. The same with the parking. We've started looking at parking on a downtown wide basis to look at parking management enhancements that we can do with existing First and Main and Historic Main Street and then model in this project so we kind of look at the, the full downtown together. Uh, additionally, with stormwater management, issues of that nature, um, we want to see what type of project will come, what type of impervious surface will be proposed, and then look uh, kind of holistically at the downtown, at how best to address that, as well as if there's existing items that we might want to look towards. And I also just wanted to mention briefly, I um, hope everyone had a chance to sign in. Uh, we'll put your emails on our constant contact list. Hopefully everyone here, or almost everyone here is already on that list, but we want to make sure we get you on that. 
Uh, when the video of this session is, is ready and uploaded to the city's website next week, we'll send you just a quick notice of that so you can review that if you wish and be able to see the, the drawings. And then um, as we go through next steps in public engagement, we'll send you additional invites in addition to what you might see in the newspaper or in other publications. And then finally, just wanted to mention, we'll have continued public engagement as we get towards that concept plan over the next couple months. We'll have similar sessions. And then that concept plan will be used as a basis for the city administration and council to work towards a development agreement with the development team and then to start the formal planning commission and architectural review board process for the actual development and permitting. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks, Greg. Yes, sir. So I have a question related to density and scale. The, our existing Hudson community is, is relatively low density. Uh, the scale of structure is generally small. Uh, perhaps for giving the library and the Hudson High School. Is, is I've looked at what you've shown here on the screen tonight and for the phase two, you envision much greater density, higher density, and the scale becomes larger in terms of more massive buildings, three, four story buildings. So that what, what you've shown us looks to me like more like Crocker Park or, or some of the developments in Dublin, Ohio or Rockville, Maryland. And, and they do not seem to have the character of Hudson. So I'm just wondering what your comment would be to that question. A couple of comments. One, in terms of, specifically in terms of four story, we really only see that in that south portion of the site. Um, we've talked a lot about height and thinking about how height um, relates to the rest of downtown. There's a lot of topographic change um, in downtown. Um, and we are going to be considering that as we think through the exact heights uh, of buildings. But um, the number of stories isn't the necessarily the most important number when we're thinking about building height, because you can have a, a pretty tall one-story building, um, and the floor-to-floor -floor heights matter as well. So um, you can do three and four stories in a way that isn't uh, dominating uh, along the street. It also has to do with the, the overall footprint of the building, and a couple of those were fairly massive in, in scale. Uh, there are things that can be done from an architectural perspective to break up the mass and the facade of buildings, even if they are a bit bigger, that they don't feel like they're one big massive building. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, some of those images might not be the exact representation of, of what we're envisioning here. And, and we understand that there's a need to make sure that even something that's a little bit bigger uh, is specifically responsive to, to the scale of development in Hudson. Now we do see this is the one opportunity to add a little density in the city, and that's part of the residential market and the, the way that the residential market and, and the employment market is moving as well in terms of creating those really walkable places, they tend to be a little bit denser. Now, it's not density just for the sake of density, but doing that in a way that they're, again, an attention to the detail of design so that you can be a little bit more dense, but you have a very highly amenitized, high quality development as well. But we understand there's a need to make sure that, that what's happening here is very complementary to the scale and character of your existing development architecture. But it would be a little bit different as well. Yes. Joel, would you like to maybe speak to uh, yeah, that? Yeah, I'm Joel Testa. I'm the president of Testa Companies. Um, I will tell you that we are looking at a boutique hotel currently for the development. We don't know if it'll be in phase two or if it'll be in phase one or if it'll be located somewhere else around downtown. We're doing a feasibility study right now. We do believe that there's room in the marketplace for the appropriate sized hotel. Um, but, uh, and it may, take the, it may take that position, but for us, as Justin was mentioning, a part of the challenge that we have is the fact that this development site sits two stories below Main Street. So as you come down Owen Brown, everything sits down in a valley. It's even lower than, than phase one. So when you enter this greater As you come site, down Clinton. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. as you come down Clinton. Uh, or, or Owen Brown for that matter. Um, but 
you know, our goal is to make this feel like an extension of phase one. So in terms of the massing, uh, in terms of the density, even to a degree in terms of the architectural design. Now we'll, we'll deviate a little bit from what's there because uh, we'll have more residential, obviously, than phase one did. And that needs to mirror more of the Western Reserve architecture that's in Hudson. Uh, and I will, and I can't emphasize it enough, and Justin uh, mentioned it, and I listened a little bit to some of the, the groans in, in the crowd as you saw some of the images up there. Those are in no way indicative of the architecture that you're going to see in this development. Uh, they're simply talking points. There are other developments that already exist, obviously. Um, and they're, in many cases, talking about massing. When you see a block like that red block, that's not a building. That's a city block that will have a lot of different buildings, could have parks yet in that space, could have alleyways in that space. So that scale is broken down further than what your, you know, your mind might represent that as a structure. It's really grass. It's really a lot that we're zoning, if you will. So, uh, so having said that, at the end of Clinton Street, we just feel that that needs to have sort of a civic uh, iconic structure at the end that is what we call terminating vista. It has to be something that when you pull off of Main Street, we see sort of an iconic structure that leads you into the second phase of the development. Yes. Do you think it's working? I there think it go. is. I was wondering if there's a lot of interest of people or our residents living above a commercial building or a uh, retail space. I would never. But I don't know, maybe some, but I think you should look into it. We are a little different than other people. We aren't Crocker Park. Yeah, so. I, I will tell you, um, so part of the challenge that we were challenged with in this development is to create some of the things that don't currently exist in Hudson. The things that exist are great, and, and you know better than anybody. Your housing market is on fire, uh, so what you have works. The issue is you're losing people to other communities, and part of it is population. That population translates in the tax dollars. Those tax dollars translate into the social services, public services, police, fire, water, street repairs, all the things that cities need to stay viable. And we're really trying to design for the next 50 years. So one of the big trends right now across the country is moving towards an urban lifestyle. And when I say urban, that turns to scare some people. Um, but for us, what urban means is mixed use and walkable. The idea that I don't need a car to get from my residence to the grocery store or to the coffee shop or to the place I work in. Um, and so that's the one thing that's missing here. Uh, you have a great sort of mixed use, walkable retail development in First and Main, but it's really missing that housing component. So uh, is it for everybody? No, absolutely not. And the goal for us was not to take this land and develop a single family subdivision when there are other parts of Hudson that very well could take a single family subdivision and be very successful, this is the only t opportunity that Hudson has to build a mixed use walkable area. So we're trying to capture those couple of people that we might be missing. I want to add, I think the other thing I was so worried about was the hotel. I think we need a, bo a bo boutique hotel very badly. We have I, a boarding school in this town and they have parents here constantly and they have to go to Twinsburg. We agree. And the only other uh, point I would add to that is um, what we envision here is a mix of housing types. Um, so it, that northern portion of the site, um, and easily a third approaching a half of the site would be a pr just pr primarily exclusively residential uh, product, not, not residential over some other use. Um, we think that there's an opportunity for some of that, but ultimately the market's going to drive how much of that uh, is appropriate here. And let me add to that, um, one of the things that we're doing that's sort of unique here is creating flex space. So some of these buildings, the design within them will allow them to be either office space or residential space, uh, condos or apartments. It's very flexible. The shell and the overall structure could be the same, and that was part of the idea of some of the images that Justin showed you was that there's buildings there that you can't from the outside determine whether they're a parking garage, an office building, a residential apartment building, or mixed use. And that's sort of our design, to create great architecture, but then to let it drive the market. So uh, instead of having the tail wag the dog, if we were to put up a speculative 150,000 square foot office building and find out that we can only fill a quarter of it, we have a problem. Um, and on, on the flip side, if we only anticipate there being a demand for X number of residential units and we're sold out in a month, then we underestimated that part of the marketplace. So we're trying to be smart enough to be future proof and to see what does the market want and be able to adapt to it so that all of these blocks are full, whether it's full of office or residential or common or both, it's really driven by demand and not by our assumptions. 
Because the difficult thing here is as we're doing the market studies, you know, the commercial market studies aren't saying that there's a big demand for 25,000 square foot or 50,000 square foot office users. And the problem bec is because there aren't spaces available for those users to know if you're getting them or not. Again, you're losing them to other communities. Um, we don't have good quantifiable data. We can't say how fast will, will a mixed use building with residential above commercial fill up in downtown Hudson because nobody's ever done it. Um, so those are the things that we're you know, cognizant of the fact that we want to be able to say, okay, if the market says something different, we can quickly move and satisfy the market need. I want to make sure we're spreading around the room here. Um, yes, sir. Their equipment only goes to three stories. Now, you may have an answered that by saying how high is each story. But So we haven't gotten to that point uh, of having that specific discussion, but obviously, and as Greg mentioned, as we move forward, there are a lot of detailed studies um, and, and additional discussions with specific uh, city departments that will have to take place to make sure that issues like that are being accommodated. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a comment on the uh, on the playground that you mentioned. Uh, the housing is, is primarily for seniors and empty empty nesters. And while I can really appreciate uh, uh, entertaining the grandkids, I mean we have the person main area, and we also have Veterans Way, which is close by. Uh, and I'm thinking that with the playground the size that you showed there, it just sounds to me like noise and congestion. And, and I want to just reiterate that I like grandkids, but uh, <laughs> this is much, a little yeah. too much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it's similar to our, our point about the don't read too much into the imagery for, for architecture, similar to, to some of that imagery, it's always difficult to find an image that captures exactly what it is that you want to convey. We run into this all the time. Uh, and some of those were a, a, were a bit large. There were a couple that are smaller in scale. And I think the opportunity here is probably something that's a little smaller in scale and, and kind of tucked in to the development. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't be too concerned about it being a dominating, you know, high traffic sort of, sort of area. I'll, let me also add to that, that uh, when we say playground, that isn't the intent. So, you know, and, and we were almost gonna, in that slide presentation, say this, the picture up in the top right uh, is an example of what we don't wanna create, which is more of a traditional playground setting. Uh, this, and maybe the way to frame it, you know, from your mindset is interactive public works of art. Uh, we want a space that's interactive, that's engaging the people of all ages, that is an amenity to the office user as much as it is to the residents, as much as it is to the children that can be brought here. I want to make one clarification. The development is not focused towards seniors. Uh, it, we, we want a diversity of housing types. Uh, while we may have some um, 55 and over exclusive uh, portions of the development site, we expect to have people of all ages. We want this to be sort of a, you know, a, a, a village within the city. And for that, we need different price points, different age groups, different housing styles. Uh, so it's, it, it can't be a one size fits all. Um, so we do expect to have younger people, and you will have families here. Uh, in fact, we have families already on the waiting list. Uh, at the last open house, there was one couple there that's been waiting for a while for this, and they brought their young child. And so you will definitely see some children in the neighborhood. So, and a uh, point about that, you heard me mentioned earlier and on the slide of the, the things that we heard from all of you at the last meeting, specifically a desire for empty nester housing. Um, you know, a lot of people that came and talked with us the last time, you know, they're, they're in that age cohort and really interested, and a number of you are as well, really interested in that, that type of housing. And so we understand that, but as Joel mentioned, we think there's an opportunity to market demand for accommodating a range uh, of ages and different different groups of people here. Yes, sir. Uh, what's, the pros what's the prospect of resolving the railroad underpass? This, this may ultimately be a, a question for, for Greg. Um, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about the railroad underpass. Uh, it's certainly the ideal outcome would be to, to widen that there's a substantial cost and, and complexity uh, to do that. So we want to be, we don't want to shut down uh, the, the best solution. At the same time, we want to be cognizant of the, the limitations, the constraint, the reality um, that is, it, that would be a very large undertaking to, to actually widen and improve the underpass. Certainly signalizing it at a minimum uh, needs to happen. 
Um, so we're not saying that that will never happen, but um, working with the railroad and accommodating all of the things that they need to be accommodated in order to widen is a, a very large and expensive undertaking. Uh, yes, sir, you were, you had your hand up. Did we lose the mic? I don't need a mic to speak loudly. <laughs> there are a, a couple residents from Owen Brown Street, I should say East Owen Brown Street here. I recognize a couple of my neighbors. And uh, we're kind of a feisty group. We are concerned not only with safety, but with maintaining our property values. Owen Brown Street, East Owen Brown Street, is one of the more historical streets in Hudson. And we certainly don't want to see anything to the detriment of that caused by the construction. We have two main, we have two main issues that I think are important to your project. Number one is the increase in traffic that this is going to cause. Uh, one of the things that many of us have suggested and think would be a better idea than a traffic circle, a traffic calmer at the green space, is a T. I don't, we don't see any reason why there has to be any in and out there. You can have in and out from other areas, other access areas to the new development. Secondly, we already have a serious flooding problem with Brandywine, uh, especially those of us who live uh, towards the, that end of Owen Brown. And we're very concerned with uh, stormwater runoff and where all that is going to go. The uh, infrastructure right now for Brandywine going across Owen Brown is uh, a mess. It's too small, it backs up. The creek backs up because there's so much debris in the creek. So it's not only the culvert underneath Owen Brown, it's everything upstream of the culvert which is causing problems. So those, those are two of the main issues that we're concerned with and uh, we'd... Yeah. Uh, we're and we're well, well aware um, uh, specifically, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because I, I, I alluded to stormwater. I didn't specifically mention the culvert. We're well aware of the situation with the culvert. I have had a number of discussions with the city engineer about ways to resolve that. Um, and we think that there are actually ways to integrate traffic calming into a solution with improving the, the culvert as well. I'd be happy to talk to you in more detail okay. about that because we're starting to get into some kind of really specific issues here. I think what we'd like to do <laughs> is... Let me say yeah, one thing. Yeah, go ahead. We're working very hard to make sure that you do not maintain your property values because <laughs> I'll be very upset if they don't go up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We are, as you can imagine, our concern. Absolutely. So, no. I know, I, I know, you. sorry, I just want to say, I know a number of you have a lot of questions. We won't be able to get to every question in this forum, but we want to talk with all of you. So, uh, Joel, if you, if you want to. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, Owen Brown has been one of the, uh, the streets that we've spent the most amount of time because obviously it's the, the direct inlet in here. There's a lot of existing issues. And one of our challenges was to look at the whole area and say, these are the issues that exist today. Here's the issues that may exist even in greater capacity when there's more people here. Um, now, certainly if some of them like traffic, if there's not buses there, buses you know, are very long and they're very slow and they create a traffic issue of themse themselves. Um, those are the kind of things that the parking study will say, well, when they're gone but there's more smaller, faster moving vehicles, what does that do? Um, and so we've spent a lot of time saying, how do we make it so that people are less likely to want to go straight out on Brown and take this new path that we're creating that's sort of a quicker outlet that feels like a, a diverted, easier to drive traffic pattern, uh, sort of that path of least resistance. Um, and some of the things are sort of win-wins and, and the green space in the middle of the development is one of them. Uh, it's designed to uh, not be a circle. It won't be a, a circle at either one of those areas. Um, so that, that circle was sort of highlighting it. Um, it didn't mean that the road was going to be a circle. Um, but that green space not only calms traffic, it creates this great boulevard. It gives us great frontage for buildings on either side. And one of the nice things it does is when you're at Owen Brown right now and you look west into this site, the green space moves the buildings out. So it moves them out of the way of your vista. So what you look down into is green, uh, as opposed to if the street stayed where it was and buildings were on either side of the street, they're at the same width of the houses. So we've pushed now the buildings back wider so that you have more of a natural open view uh, and you, you don't see buildings until you get past this green place all the way over by the, the railroad. So we're doing a lot of things. Uh, there may still be some more changes that you'll see before you know the final plan, but uh, believe me, 
that's the one of the primary concerns of this development is, is the least amount of impact and fixing as many problems as we can uh, to the surrounding neighborhood. Now, having said that, um, one of the things that we want to do, and, and this kind of triggered that, and, and those of you that were at the first open house know it, we've got tables set up over here that represent the um, sort of different segments. So there's a commercial, residential, mixed use, public space, and uh, park-like amenity area. What we would like you to do is to come up there. There's sticky notes and there's markers, and for those of you that um, you know didn't get a chance to ask a question, we'll stand around. But more importantly, we want your comments and your input jotted down and stuck to uh, on a little sticky note and put them on these. As you saw up here, we, we quantify those, we track them, we document them. We have absolutely made changes to this master plan based on some of those decisions that we got in the last meeting and stakeholder meetings. And you know, your input is extremely valuable and it is shaping uh, what happens here. And as we tell people, those that show up and those that vote get to you know, have a controlling interest. And so you know, what you're seeing is what the masses are saying. So please write it down there because if we have this give and take here, it won't get quantified. Uh, we're happy to stand around and answer your questions, but we want to document your concerns, document what you like, what you don't like. Um, so uh, yep. do you have anything else? I just said, again, uh, all those photos are on the sheets over here, and if you have very specific thoughts, don't be shy. I don't think any of you will be. Um, you know, leave us a note. Uh, tell us what you think. And uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out this evening. And again, we'll, we're around, and we'll uh, continue conversation and answer questions that you have. And thanks please, a lot. Uh, share the website with all of your friends and families uh, it's not just for people that live within hudson it's people we're trying to attract into hudson as well businesses and residentials alike so hudson send phase them two com and, and and ask them to take that survey it'll only take a couple of minutes of their time Can I ask a question? yes okay. Do you want well we don't the question was what's wrong with duplicating hudson's architecture you want to be careful not to so directly mimic a, a historic piece of architecture in a way that doesn't actually um, do it justice. So we want to complement it. Um, you know, we want it to feel authentic as well. So it's a, it's a balancing act. Uh, well, yeah. Well, and we're the, having that conversation here and, tonight. And we yeah. have it, and, and we have in public stakeholder meetings. And the idea, once again, is that this is first in Maine. This is not a residential subdivision. So this is the densest part of Hudson. We're just extending it. So this is the phase two of the same density, the same height, the same issues. It is downtown, uh, you know, and that's the difference. While it, it's, we're not trying to be a residential subdivision, we're not trying to be the single family streets, because that exists elsewhere. We're trying to extend the urban dense phase one downtown.